Welcome to Getting Started with Elixir by Pact Publishing, Section 2, Basic Types and Operators. In this section, we'll get our hands dirty with Elixir. We'll explore the literal and collection types provided by the language, as well as functions and operators used to manipulate them. Let's move on to the first video, Literals and Operators. In this video, we'll take a look at the built-in literal types provided by Elixir and the operators used to manipulate them. In the end, you'll be able to play around with these types and build more complex expressions with them. Before we get started, make sure you have installed Elixir for your operating system. Open up a terminal console or command line and type IEX, which stands for Interactive Elixir. After that, press Enter. This will boot you into a program called a REPL, Read, Evaluate, Print Loop, that allows you to type expressions and see their outcome immediately. This will be very important so you can try examples in this video as well as explore some variations by yourself. To exit Elixir, at any time, just press Ctrl-C on your keyboard twice. The first thing most high-level programming languages allow you to do is manipulate numbers, and Elixir is not an exception. The language allows you to work with two types of numbers, integers and floating-point numbers. Here are some examples on how you can write each type. For integer numbers, Elixir allows you to write them not only in their decimal format, but also in three different bases. Hexadecimal, by prefixing the value with 0x, octal, by prefixing it with 0o, and binary, by prefixing it with 0b. These different bases are very useful when dealing with quantities more closely associated to systems programming, such as memory addresses, bit masks, and so forth. Here is a table with some examples. Sometimes, the actual size of a number is not clearly perceptible by writing it like so. Elixir allows us to use the underscore character to emphasize the separation between some parts of an integer number. In this case, we've divided the number in milliard quantities, but it can also be used to separate parts of a telephone number, for example. You can place the separator anywhere in the number where it's convenient. As for the actual size of a number, a cool thing about Elixir is that we can have arbitrary precision. There's no worrying about if a number is too big or if it will overflow. And this is valid for both integer quantities and floating point numbers. As for ways of manipulating numbers, all the common basic operators are present. We have addition, represented by the plus sign, subtraction, with the dash or minus sign, multiplication, with the star or asterisk, and finally, division with the forward slash. Note that division, even integer division, always yields a floating point result. For dealing with integer division, Elixir provides two special functions, div, which performs the integer division, and rem, which returns the modulo or remainder of an integer division. Here is an example of how to chain the arithmetic operators together on the interactive Elixir prompt. Notice the usage of parentheses which forces the precedence in the evaluation of certain expressions. Besides numbers, Boolean values are very important in a programming language to allow the evaluation of conditions. Elixir has two dedicated Boolean values, true and false. Besides these, certain Boolean expressions also accept truthy and falsy values. In Elixir, everything that's not nil is truthy, and nil is falsy. For Boolean operators, the basic AND, OR, and NOT operators are available. There are also variations of these operators, the double ampersand, pipe, and exclamation mark. The difference between the former and the latter are their strictness. The first ones expect actual Boolean values, true and false, hence being strict, while the second ones work with truthy and falsy expressions, so we call them non-strict. Let's see how these operators work in practice. If we use the strict operator AND on true and false, the result is false. Using the non-strict operator on the same argument yields the same result. But when we try to use the strict operator with a truthy value and the boolean true, we get an argument error. The strict operators only work on true and false. Using the non-strict operator on the same arguments yields true. Besides the boolean operators, Elixir provides the regular comparison operators less than, greater than, greater than or equals to, less than or equals to, not equal, with two variants, and equal, also with two variants. When applied, 
these operators always yield a Boolean output, be it true or false. The two variations of not equals and equals are actually the non-strict and strict variants, as we've seen for the Boolean operators. The difference between the strict and non-strict operators in this case is that the strict ones don't consider floating point and integer values to be the same. For example, 2.0 is not the same as the integer 2. The non-strict operator considers both values to be the same as long as their quantities are the same. Let's see an example of the strict versus non-strict in action. If we use the non-strict equals operator on the floating point number 15.0 and the integer 15, the result is true as their quantities are the same in practice. Using the strict variant of this operator on the same arguments yields false, however, as one is an integer and the other is a floating point number. The comparison operators can be used with any elixir type, and the types themselves can even be compared with one another. When comparing types with each other, the following precedence from least significant to more significant is assumed. You don't have to memorize this, though, but it's good to know all the same. After numbers and booleans, text is one of the most important things we'll be wanting to manipulate in our programs. String literals are the way we represent text in Elixir. Any text we enclose in double quotes is considered a string. In this case, we're writing Hello World. We can actually write the same text in Greek using Greek characters. Strings in Elixir are encoded using UTF-8 character encoding, so you can write any text that abides to the specific encoding. We can place special escape characters inside the string. These escape characters are used to indicate special characters that are to be interpreted when the string is printed out. In this example, we're using the escape character backslash n, which indicates a new line. When the string is printed, the hello world sentence is split by a new line after the comma. Escape characters are written using the backslash character. There are many other special characters that need this escaping mechanism, such as tabulations, and even when writing a double quote inside a string. Elixir also provides a way of inserting, or interpolating, expressions inside a string. Interpolation is done by encasing an expression inside brackets preceded by a number sign. In this example, we're evaluating the expression 2 times 15, which yields 30. These interpolation expressions are evaluated as soon as the string itself is evaluated, not when it's printed like with the escape characters. Elixir also provides a comprehensive list of functions that we can use to manipulate strings and text in general. We can reverse text, and we can replace the word world with you inside a string. There are many other functions in the string module, so be sure to explore them in the Elixir documentation. The final literal we'll be looking at in this video is the atom. The definition of an atom is a constant whose name is its value. Think of it as kind of a label, tag, or keyword. Here are some examples of atoms. They all start with a colon character, followed by some text, and can be composed of any text without white spaces in between. If we want to have special characters, or have them start with a number, we have to enclose the atom's text in double quotes, like in the last example. As an example of this, trying to use for the value of an atom a word that starts with a number yields an error. Instead, we must enclose it in double quotes. Remember when we introduced Boolean values a while back? The values true and false are actually equivalent to the atoms with the same names. True and false are thus synthetic sugar for their atom forms. So in conclusion, in this video we've explored the basic literal types in Elixir. Numbers, in both their integer and floating point counterparts, Booleans, Strings, which are the way we represent text, and atoms, a curious type used mostly for labels. We've also seen some operators and functions that we can use to manipulate these types.